G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Bitcoin is just, you know, tightly squeezing, you know, tightly coiling and it's getting so tight, I think something massive is going to happen. I honestly think it'll happen in the next 48 hours, if not maybe even the next 24 hours. Uh, exactly what's going to happen? Well, you know, I guess that's, you know, up for a bit of conjecture, but I actually think uh, it's probably going to be something big, and I am hoping that it's to the upside. Uh, we'll have a look very shortly uh, at the chart, and I'll show you what I mean. But at the moment, the market cap is down. So again, I think we're at 350 billion, 352 billion. So we're down a little bit, but it's just tightly squeezing. As you can see, 10,700. We cannot break that $11,000 barrier at the moment. But in saying that, at the moment over the last few days, as soon as Bitcoin gets down around 10,500, it is being snapped up quick smart. It's just not going above 11,000. So as I said yesterday in my video, uh, I think it was uh, Grayscale, was it? They've bought more Bitcoin. Uh, you know, I honestly believe institutional buyers uh, just every time it dips, they're just slowly picking it up piece by piece by piece uh, and just gradually building their positions. And that's why Bitcoin uh, is just slowly but surely sort of going up and up and up. And what I believe, my personal opinion, is that it is going to, yeah, there's going to be a big move in the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. And my personal belief is that it's going to be to the upside. I could be wrong and I've been wrong before and I can guarantee you I'll be wrong again in the future. That's just the way it is. It's just my gut feeling and we'll have a look at the charts and I'll show you what I mean. So Bitcoin, you know, we had this big pump up, we pulled back and we completely negated basically all of this. And then we pumped up and we sold off. And we pumped up and over the last few days, so one, two, three, four, five, six days now, we can see we've been in such a tight range and we you know, almost negated this trend line and now we are just sitting below this trend line and I honestly think in the next 24 to 48 hours we are going to push out of this and it's going to be a push to the upside. I could be wrong. Look, it, it, there's, there's no doubt I could be wrong. You know, Anyone can be wrong at any stage but the overall trend again since the crash is we are moving up could we have a retracement? Yes, but this line here, this is that greater trend line. This is the trend line that we've been in for ages. So there you go. This is that downward trend line. We've broken out of that downward trend line. Gone above it, come back down below it and pushed out. And so we're just ranging on top of it. And as we can see, it's just getting tighter and tighter in this little squeeze here. And I think we are going to push out to the upside in the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. I still think it could come down and possibly touch this greater trend line. That is possible. So get down to maybe 10,000 sort of 400. But at the moment, again, it's around about that 10,000 sort of $500 level. It's just being snapped up. No one's really selling below that, but it is being bought and there's that very tight squeeze. So I think Bitcoin is going to have a breakout in the next 24 to 48 hours and I am expecting it to be the up, to be to the upside. But, you know, I, I could be wrong and it could be to the downside. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, growth in the S&P 500 today upon news that there might be a new stimulus package coming out. So I think that is what is going to fuel this with Bitcoin as well. I, th I am thinking that this is going to break out to the upside and we're going to come back and ca uh, capture this $11,000 mark and maybe even get up to around the $12,000 mark. But time will tell. We'll wait and see. But something I found interesting is so this is Bitcoin sort of coiling up. Have a look what Ethereum's doing. It's very, very similar. So it's pushed up, come down, and now it's just starting to coil and it's getting very close to breaking outside. So I think Ethereum is going to do basically the same thing. You know, all of these uh, coins are, you know, fairly similar in the, in the way they play out, especially compared to the dollar. But I think Ethereum is going to basically do the same. And I think we're going to get back up to this sort of, you know, $400 mark fairly easy. And again, maybe even this $428 mark. You know, 28, 48 hours from now, we'll know whether I was right or I was wrong. And if I was wrong, then, you know, 
feel free to you know let me know i was wrong but i am thinking we're going to break out to the upside i believe there's going to be some more stimulus coming soon you know most of these things are starting to be you know fairly aggressively bought up even the altcoins you know i've recovered recovered you know at least some of those losses that they've had so i expect uh there's going to be a breakout to the upside in the very near future could be wrong and it might even stretch out to here we go roughly the 11th of october for a ethereum and bitcoin's roughly sort of the same as well so we've got about the 8th of october there it could take to there before we get the true breakout but i honestly think it'll happen in the next yeah 28 48 hours we'll wait and see but interesting story so hacker steals 15 million dollars after people pile into an unreleased yearn finance project so everyone's trying to jump on these next big things at the moment and a lot of people are getting burnt Look, I get it, and I'm, I've even contemplated a few times, you know, just getting into these Uniswap things and, you know, putting a thousand bucks on it or a couple of hundred dollars, whatever I have at the time. Unlikely I'd put a thousand on it. I probably wouldn't have a thousand dollars lying spare. But the problem is, you know, it's really those first couple that generally do really well. And then after that, just all the sort of scams start to happen. So the original Yearn Finance. Looks like it was a pretty good bet. You know, uh, using uh, Uniswap nice and early and getting onto some of those uh, were pretty good bets. But now it's just tons of scams and people are losing money left, right and centre. So please, if you're getting involved with these things, be very careful. And particularly some of this Yearn Finance stuff, like it, it's unaudited. Uh, and this was, uh, you know, something that hadn't even, even been released. And uh, Andre Con Con Conye, I think his name is, or Conray, or Crone, I'm not sure how to say it, has said that he's going to look at assisting people uh, to get back the $8 million he received, uh, you know, from the hacker for this sort of thing. So buyers beware, you know, when you get in early it's just hard to know whether these projects are going to last and be around that's why i get into you know i did the whole ico thing back in 2017 i got into a number of icos and not one of them did well i you know i don't know if i was unlucky but i literally participated in probably about 10 icos and not one of them did very well at all a number of them were uh, scams uh, and others just kind of faded off into nothing after time uh, they, they all lost money yeah i don't again i don't know whether i was lucky or unlucky and that's what i see in this whole kind of DeFi space and all these new projects that are coming out on uniswap and that is the first couple generally are pretty good you know there was work put into them by people and now there's just scam after scam after scam exit scams happening left right and center and people just losing their money and you know some people uh including myself would probably be like oh well, a thousand bucks isn't too much but to other people, $1,000 would be a lot and it could be near their life savings. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not putting $1,000 into uh, anything like this. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to knock you in finance or anything like that. I just don't know, you know, if I want to be putting $1,000 into things that I, you know, I know hardly anything about. I'd rather put my money into things that are a little bit tried and tested. You know, yeah, the gains won't be as much. But, you know, the risks are a little bit lower. Uh, and my personal opinion is really, I don't think, I don't see crypto as a risky asset anymore. Some of them, yes, all this new stuff, 100%, you know, new anything, new stocks that come out could be risky. But I think things like Bitcoin, here to stay, it's not risky. Could its price fluctuate, uh, you know, a fair amount? Absolutely. But Bitcoin's not going to zero. I think the chances of Bitcoin going to zero are just about nil. You know, everything that's being done at the moment, you know, ETFs are starting to be looked at and come out and, you know, banks can hold custody of cryptocurrencies. And, you know, there's so much stuff happening out there in the crypto space at the moment, regulation and leading to mass adoption. I don't see Bitcoin as a risky asset at all. I don't really see Ethereum as a risky asset. There is some risk to it because it's still not quite tried and tested, at least ETH 2.0. So there's some risk in there. But, you know, short of there being some massive uh, glitch or, you know, bug or something in the system, I think ETH's, ETH is a pretty safe bet. 
Now, none of what I say is financial advice. I always need to repeat that. This is just my personal opinion. Don't do uh, anything because I think it's good or great. Do your own research and make your own mind up. I just know what I'm doing. I don't see Bitcoin as a risky asset. I don't see ETH as a risky asset. That doesn't mean there's no risk involved. I just don't think they are risky. There's, you know, there's a difference between something having a bit of risk. Everything's got a risk. Your car's got a risk that it might not go tomorrow. There's a risk that you might have a crash. But that doesn't mean that cars aren't safe if you drive them properly and look after them and things like that. And I think the same with Ethereum. I think the same with Bitcoin. I think the same with XRP. You know, they've been around for such a long time and all the regulation and everything that's coming in. I don't consider them a risky asset. And I, you know, I believe that in, you know, it might only be 18 months from now, but let's say sort of 18 months to 10 years from now, I'll be looking back and so glad that, you know, I invested when I did uh, and, you know, st stuck to my guns and, you know, followed the path because I honestly think uh, th this is the future. The cash system, the fiat system, system, it's dying. It's been dying for a long time. The dollar's lost 95% of its value and it's gonna to continue to uh, lose more. We are going to a move to a completely digital system and even the stable coins and things like that, you know, the, the, there's still no difference to the fiat system. It's just you don't actually get a dollar coin or a dollar note or anything like that. It's just a digital version. They will still be devalued because they'll continue to just make more and more and more of them. Anything that has a fixed cap, that is where the money's going to be. And I know Ethereum doesn't have a fixed cap, but the uh, the systems they're putting in place is basically going to make it deflationary in the future and things like that. You know, there's detractors, Bitcoin maximalists, you know, hate ethereum and you know are against it and all the rest of it but not yeah not everything is as black and white uh, as they like to make out again make your own mind up it's just my personal opinion i'm super bullish on ethereum i think ethereum is going to be massive i've you know built my position in ethereum i'm happy with it i've built my position in uh, bitcoin i wish i had more but anyway that's always the way i wish i had more eth as well and i've built my position in xrp and they are my long-term holds i'm going to hold on to them for you know who knows how long will i maybe sell some of them here and there yeah maybe but really uh, to be honest probably not i'm just going to hold on to them uh long term I, I think you know that's where the big gains are going to be made at least for me and i've got you know a number of altcoins i've got quite a number of altcoins i've probably got 20 or 30 different altcoins where i've just built small positions in them some of them have you know turned into bigger positions uh chain link i've got a reasonable size position but that's mainly due to the price i got into it at i think like i don't know three dollars or something like that and it's worth 10 now so you know it tripled its value synthetics i got into that uh at you know under a dollar i think it's about 70 cents or something like that i was getting into it and now it's worth oh, i can't even remember nine nine dollars or six dollars or something like that i think about five or six dollars now but basically that's five x you know uh, and a number of other altcoins that have done uh, quite well. But, you know, unfortunately, I was not unfortunately, but I was buying altcoins that have uh, retraced nearly 50%. You know, UBT, again, that was a real killer. <laughs> it's about 46% uh, loss for me at the moment. Digibyte, uh, uh, I've lost a bit there as well. Uh, what's the other one? Verge lost a bit there as well. Polkadot, I've lost only a little bit, not too much. But I'm holding them the long term anyway, so I'm not really worried. Obviously, you know, it'd hurt if they went to zero, but I don't believe they will go to zero. I believe, you know, there'll be new all-time highs for almost all cryptocurrencies in the next bull run. So, you know, some will do better than others. Uh, and again, you know, let, let's say, you know, like Verge and Unibright and all of that go to zero. Not that I believe they will. You know, I've lost a couple hundred dollars. That, that's, you know, that's not going to make or break me. Uh, you know, I would like for them to turn into a, a couple hundred more or a couple thousand more. But, you know, that's investing. You take the risks. But as I said, I don't think of the good cryptocurrencies, the ones that have been around, I don't believe they're risky assets at all anymore. Some people will. Uh, I don't. I, be I believe XRP will be here for the long haul. I believe Ethereum will be here for the long haul. And I think 
Bitcoin uh, will be here for the long haul. And I think a number of the DeFi projects are going to be around for the long haul as well. You know, things like Aave, uh, Synthetics, uh, Kyber Network, you know, a number of projects. I don't think they'll be going anywhere anytime soon. And, you know, they have they have a place in the ecosystem and I think they can continue on. But it's all about the teams, you know, behind them and building with them and things like that. Now, something else we need to keep in mind and why I'm so bullish on uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. There's only two and a half million Bitcoin left to mine. So over the next, I think, you know, couple of sort of, I think it's a hundred years, it's uh, or something like that. There's not that long left anyway, and all the Bitcoin will be mined. So it is going to get more and more scarce. There's going to be less of it uh, for sale. You know, every four years, it reduces by 50% in the amount uh, that can be mined in a time. So we need to keep that in mind. And I like this graph. This is where we are now. We are almost sort of, you know, not at the end, but getting to the real skinny point where there's just not that many left. There's about 18 million that have been mined now. So we got about two and a half million to go. This is where we are. Yeah, sure, we'd all love to have got into Bitcoin back here, especially sort of down here, and you really could have rode that sort of wave when you're probably picking, you know, Bitcoin up at like, you know, a dollar, twenty dollars or something like that. But look, that's life. But this is where we are. We're getting to the skinny end where there's not many left. That is why Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, is going, you know, it's going to be worth a lot in the future. I don't even think we'll look at it in dollar terms anymore. I think the dollar will die, even the digital dollar, and I think we'll move on to Satoshis and that, or at least some other form. It might not be Satoshis because I don't know if Bitcoin will be the world reserve currency, or, or it could be, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. Now, something else. Bitcoin has been above 10,000 for a record amount of time now. So closing at 10,700 on September 27th, Bitcoin set a record with 63 straight days of closing above $10,000. I'm actually, I don't know if we'll ever see Bitcoin under 10,000 again. Again, we go back to the charts and look at this, like it was getting snapped up. As soon as it got down to that $10,000 range, people were buying it. And you know, short of something disastrous happening in the markets, it's going to be the same. It's going to be bought up. We can see, uh, you know, it was aggressively bought up here. Again, getting down to the $10,200 level. It was just being pushed up. Now, there's a tight squeeze going on at the moment. But I think at the moment, you know, it's around that sort of, there we go, $10,500 level. If it even remotely dips down there, it's getting bought up pretty quick. And I think a lot of it is institutional buyers copying the micro strategy formula they're not coming in and just dumping millions into it because that will just push the price sky high they are just slowly but surely buying it they've probably got you know uh, orders set you know and it's running 24 hours a day seven days a week and just every time it sort of dips down a little bit they just buy small increments slowly but surely but the sad thing is that obviously someone's selling Bitcoin uh, at these prices other than just the miners and particularly these big dips like this. Some of that can be miners, but I think that's a lot of people just panicking and selling. Uh, I have never sold any Bitcoin, period. I have traded some Bitcoin uh, on occasions, but I've never sold any Bitcoin, not since I got back into it in late 2017. Uh, I've never cashed out any of my crypto because I'm in it for the long haul. I can see what's coming in the future, or at least, you know, I believe I can see. <laughs> I can't actually see it. I'm not Nostradamus or a savant or anything like that, but I can just feel that things are changing and this is the future. This is where it's going. If you don't believe it and don't want to get into it, fine. You, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I, I would find it unlikely that anyone that's watching this uh, would not agree that this is what's coming. But if you believe that this is what's coming, 21 million, try and divide that up by, you know, 3 billion people on earth, the price is going to go up substantially higher. Now, it still may take 
probably a decade, I reckon. There could be another sort of two halvings to come before we really see, you know, the price kind of level out uh, and it possibly becoming a world reserve currency. There's a lot of work that has to be done on Bitcoin for it to be a world reserve currency. I think it will be uh, something that is more like gold. It will be the digital gold. Excuse me. So I don't think that we are going to, you know, be going to the stores and, you know, buying things at the shops with it it will be that store of value it'll be a lot easier to transact in the future i have no doubt about that but i don't think we'll be using it to pay for things on a day-to-day -day basis the 21 million it'd just be too hard even divided down into all its million pieces uh, yeah i just i i don't think that that would work fundamentally for a population of you know three billion people everyone would only be able to have you know such a small amount that even that wouldn't be broken down uh wouldn't be able to be broken down into enough sort of pieces you know to again go around to be to be able to go to the shops and buy some milk and you know buy a pack of gum or whatever it is people are doing so i don't think bitcoin is ever going to be used for our everyday uh sort of life I think something else will be used, whether it's Ethereum or Cardano or XRP, you know, something will come out. You know, initially it's going to be the stable coins. The stable coins are going to be what is going to be used. Every country will probably make their own one. But that fiat system, it still goes to zero. Nothing will change. We are going to have to move away from uh, that kind of system or at least have that backed by something that's hard capped. You can have a fiat system, but it has to be backed by things that can't be inflated and things like that. So Bitcoin, you know, gold, uh, and you know, whatever else comes in the future. We'll really have to wait and see what happens there. But last but not least, Matic Network. So they're a layer two scaling solution, and they have come out with two massive things just in the last 24 hours. So number one, Tether, so USDT, has now moved onto the Matic network. That will help substantially bring down the gas prices. Tether and the stable coins in general, they take up the most room on ETH. So the fact that USDT has moved to Matic, that is massive news. Uh, it hasn't done a whole lot to the price of Matic at the moment, but I'm sure in the future it will. So this will, you know, this is great for Matic, but it gets even better. We go down a little bit. USDC is also moving to the Matic network. So that is uh, the one from Coinbase. Uh, that is now on the Matic network uh, as well. So two massive you know, US dollar peg stable coins are now available on the Matic network and it is taking the pressure off the Ethereum main net uh, to bring down the gas fees. So well done to Matic. Uh, this is great news for them. Uh, and hopefully, you know, they continue to, you know, build more things on their network. And that's not all of this. They've got other DeFi stuff going on and staking and all sorts of stuff. So, you know, if you want to go over to Matic Network and have a look at them on Twitter, uh, you know, you'll be able to read all about it. All about it. Uh, I have my position in Matic. I've been staking with Matic uh, and I love it. Uh, again, the, the gas prices have uh, made it difficult at times, but... You know what I mean? Matic are, are a layer two solution, uh, a layer two solution, sorry, and they will help to ease all that congestion. And you know, there's other ones out there. You know, the optimistic rollups and zk rollups and things like that. You know, all the sharding that will sort of happen. You know, this is massive news, and this is what Ethereum needs more than anything. They desperately need layer two solutions to come out that aren't simply part of the uh, ETH 2.0 upgrade that should happen you know late october hopefully early november provided everything goes well all right well i've been uh talking for a while i'll let you go but let me know if you're uh, in matic uh and if you're you know excited by the fact that they've been able to take on you know usdt and usdc uh and hopefully you know help bring down those gas fees they're still around about 100 at the moment the gas fees they have been cheaper so they're up a little bit again but you know, nowhere near the kind of 300 uh, guay that they were not that long ago. So yeah, let me know if you're in Matic uh, and if you're excited by what Matic's doing. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Please hit that like, down, like button down below uh, and comment and subscribe. 
and I'll see you next time.